Number 22, complete and balance the following acid-base equations. And then we have letter B out of the bunch. We have aqueous H2SO4 is reacting with NaOH. Okay, so first off, memorize your strong acids and bases, right? There's six of each. On that list, H2SO4 is on there. So I know that H2SO4, especially because it has a hydrogen in the front, that this is a strong acid. And likewise, on your six strong bases, NaOH is a strong base. So I know that these two are going to be reacting with each other. H2SO4 is the acid, NaOH is the base. So let's see, I have H2SO4 plus NaOH. And that's going to yield my new products. We just got to figure out what they are. Now, the cool thing about acid-base reactions is that they're just secret double displacement or double replacement reactions. So we're going to be doing basically the completing of the equation by just doing a double displacement. And when we do double displacements, we do outers with outers, inners with inners. And I'll show you what that means in two seconds. The first thing that you want to do is you want to break up this compound into its ions, right? Remember, there was always two ions that came together to make a certain compound. We need to know what those two guys are. Now, we're, we're in the middle of chem class, right? right? So we can spot out that SO4 is one of our polyatomics. SO4 is sulfate. So we should keep that together because polyatomics never separate. And then we have the second component, H. So I know that when I break this up, H2SO4, I'm going to break it between the H and the SO4. So that means that I use the subscripts for the quantities of both to figure out what the charges were. Now, I have a two here, right? Two hydrogen. However, how many SO4s do I have? I don't have four of them because this is part of the polyatomic, but I secretly have one of them. So I'm going to use those subscripts to crisscross back up. This two told me that the SO4 was a two minus charge, and this one told me that H was a plus one. So now I have H as a plus one and SO4 as a two minus. Those were the ions that came to form H2SO4. And you can just double check, right? H is in group one. It wants to be a plus one charge. And sulfate is always a two minus. So we did it correctly. Let's do the same for NaOH. There's got to be a break, but I notice that I have OH. That's hydroxide. So that's a polyatomic. The split is going to be here. So when I just write it out again, I need to know how many of each I have. Well, I have one sodium, and then I have one hydroxide. Those are the subscripts that we're going to use to get the charges. This one crisscrossed up telling me that OH was a minus one. This one crisscrosses up telling me that sodium was a plus one. So I now have that, Na plus one and OH minus one. That's the hardest part, making sure that you have your ions correct because now we're going to do that double displacement thing. Outers with outers, inners with inners. You use that to make your compounds. What I mean is that you have H plus one, right? That's outside of these four. And the other outside guy is OH minus. Outers with outers, inners, the sulfate, with inners. Those are your new compounds. So the H is going to hook up with the OH. The sulfate is going to hook up with the sodium. Now let's give it a shot. Doesn't matter which one you write first. I'll just write the H plus one first. So H plus one is now going to be reacting with OH minus one. Take those charges and crisscross them down now. So this one tells me that I have one hydroxide. This one tells me that I have one H. Whoop. 
So my compound would be HOH, but HOH is basically H2O. So that's one of my compounds, okay? Plus the other one. Now, don't be tempted to put this sulfate in the front, even though it looks like a, a front guy. But remember, positives go first and then the negatives. So I have Na plus 1 with SO4, 2 minus. Crisscross those. This 1 crisscrosses down, telling me that I need 1 sulfate. This 2 crisscrosses down, telling me that I need 2 sodiums. So it would be Na2. SO4. I don't need parentheses because I only have one of the polyatomic. So that's your second compound, Na2SO4. Now let's just put the states on them. They told us that uh, H2SO4 was aqueous, so that literally means AQ, right? AQ. And they just said it reacts with NaOH. Now, how are we going to know what NaOH is? That goes by your solubility rules. But there's a really, really easy rule to remember. Just remember that all group 1, so all group 1 ions, are always soluble. That means that they're always AQ. They will dissolve in your solvent. So since Na, sodium, is in group 1, I don't care what it's bound to, all group 1 ions are aqueous, so that's an aqueous. When you're doing acid-base equations, the water that you make, that's the solvent. So that's a pure liquid. And then here we go again with the Na2SO4, I see that I have a group 1 ion, so that would just be AQ again, because all group 1 ions are aqueous. Now we made a equation, but we got to make sure that we balance it, right? Anytime that you make an equation, balance, balance, balance. Now we did the chart a lot of times, right, where we did reactants and products. You could do it that way. I'm just going to do the quick inversion. I'm going to look at the polyatomics. I'm going to group together the polyatomics. So let's see. Uh, the first thing that I noticed, though, that's different is I have one sodium here, right? But I have two sodiums here. So I need to correct that. What number would I put in front to get a two? Definitely a two, right? So I have two sodiums and two sodiums. Let's keep moving. Hmm. If I group together my polyatomic sulfate, SO4, I have one of them on the left side. And I also have one of them on the right side. So that checks out. Let's look at the hydrogens. I have two hydrogens here, right? So I have a total of two hydrogens, literally plus, so plus. There's another hydrogen here. So I could say one, right? Two plus, ooh, just kidding. Guys, there was a two in front of here, right? So how many hydrogens here? Two. So two plus two is a total of four hydrogens on the left side, but there's only two hydrogens on your product side. What number are you going to put here? Yeah, a two. Maybe I'll put it in blue. There you go. Two times two is four. Total of four on the reactant side, so that now balances. And then let's see, what else do we got? Let's check these oxygens. So I have two oxygens here. I have two oxygens here. I don't include the oxygens for sulfate because I already did that. But if you want, it would be four plus two is six. Two plus four is six. So either way, you're going to see that they're balanced. And that's it. We balanced the equation. What do you think? So this is the full-blown answer. All right, guys. Hopefully this helped. If it did, click the like button. And if you want, subscribe to the channel. But if not, that's okay. Um, we'll keep helping you out anyway. I will see you guys all in the next lesson. And keep studying hard, okay? Let's ace those tests. Ace those tests. <laughs> see you later. Bye-bye.